I'm Jason Carter. Physical optimization defines my life. The day I was born, doctors nearly killed me with medical malpractice. They said I'd never walk. I've been proving them wrong for 35 years. It's easier than you think to obtain super optimal health. I've devoted my life to it, and with my help, you can too. I'm Jason Carter, and this is Enzymental. And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to talk to you about how acid is essential for healthy digestion. Acid, also known as hydrochloric acid, or HCl, promotes the breakdown of proteins. It's essential for optimal absorption of certain minerals, and it forms a barrier against bacterial and fungal pathogens that might otherwise enter the intestine through the nose or the mouth. Absence of stomach acid, otherwise known as achlorhydria, or too little stomach acid, which is hypochlorhydria, results in nutrient deficiencies and imbalances in the intestinal microflora, which can lead to a host of serious disorders. Feeling uncomfortable after eating, as in gas, bloating, belching, and heartburn, is even called acid indigestion, when in fact it's nearly always caused by too little stomach acid rather than too much. It is poor digestion in the stomach, often combined with bacterial overgrowth that creates pressure and causes the symptoms we just talked about. Antacids and acid blockers treat the symptoms, but they don't often get to the root of the problem. Not correcting the problem can lead to nutritional deficiencies, and again, that long list of ugly conditions. Even acid reflux, known as GERD, which is the passage of acid from the stomach into the esophagus, is also a result of too little stomach acid. GERD is caused not by excess acid production, but by a weakness of the lower esophageal sphincter, or LES muscle, which fails to keep the acid where it belongs, in the stomach. In fact, testing has shown hypochlorhydria in 90% of severe GERD cases. The stomach has mechanisms for protecting itself from this strong acid, whereas the esophagus does not. Consequently, even a small amount of acid can do great harm to the esophagus. So there are several tests available to see if you have adequate stomach acid production. One is a test involving vinegar or lemon juice, and it works like this. If you notice indigestion after a meal, swallow a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar or lemon juice, and if it makes you feel better, it's likely that you are low in stomach acid. If it makes you feel any worse, then low stomach acid is probably not your problem, and you shouldn't take any supplemental HCL. If the vinegar or lemon juice leaves you feeling uncomfortable, drink a large glass of water to dilute the acid, or even neutralize the acid with half a teaspoon of baking soda. Bitter herbs have been used for centuries to promote digestion. Bitter tasting herbs like fennel seed, gentian root, cardamom, wormwood, and astragalus root are thought to increase the flow of a variety of digestive juices including saliva, HCL, bile, and pancreatic enzymes. They may also increase the tone of the LES muscle, which again is that culprit involved in GERD. Bitter complexes are available in liquid form as combinations of several herbs, as I've told you before. They're usually administered 10 to 30 minutes before eating by sipping or swallowing a counted number of drops, usually around 15 to 30 drops, in a small amount of water. Bitters are also reported to be effective if merely touched to the tongue. Tasting bitterness seems to be the important factor. It's speculated that this response evolved to protect us from eating poisonous plants, which are often bitter. And as I've told you before, bitter is the most common taste in nature. Bitters are likely to work best for someone who still has acid-producing capacity. Betaine hydrochloride is a synthesized molecule that provides a safe way to deliver hydrochloric acid to the stomach. Betaine hydrochloride is sold in capsules or tablets containing approximately 350 milligrams or as much as 700 milligrams. The greater part of the weight, about three quarters of it, is betaine and the remainder is hydrochloric acid. And this particular betaine has nothing to do with anhydrous betaine, which has no hydrochloric acid and is instead used for lowering homocysteine and not aiding digestion. Betaine hydrochloride supplements often include pepsin, which is a protein digesting enzyme that can function in an acid environment. Pepsin, or technically its inactive precursor, pepsinogen, and stomach acid are secreted by different cell types in the stomach. It's thought that when HCL secretion is inadequate, pepsin production is also inadequate, hence the inclusion of pepsin and betaine hydrochloride supplements. 
So how much betaine should you take? Try starting with one capsule or tablet of about 650 milligrams early on in a sizable protein-containing meal. Stop if you experience any stomach irritation, like a stomach ache, heartburn, or a feeling of warmth or pressure in your stomach, and do not take any more HDL supplements beyond that. If you are experiencing such a reaction, drink a large glass of water to dilute the acid or take half a teaspoon of baking soda in a cup of water. If taking the first capsule of betaine hydrochloride does not aggravate your symptoms, continue to take one capsule with each similar size meal for two or three days and increase to two capsules with each meal of similar size. If there still is no problem, increase it to three capsules, and when taking several capsules, it's best to space them out over the meal. Continue increasing the number of capsules in this manner until you notice a warm feeling in your stomach or you've reached up to seven capsules, whichever one comes first. If you notice a warm feeling, you've taken too many capsules and you need to take one less capsule for a meal of that size. That's how you determine your tolerance for betaine hydrochloride. When you found the largest number of capsules that you can take without feeling warmth in your stomach, continue taking that amount with other similar size meals. And of course, if you're eating smaller meals, take less. The only significant cautions with betaine hydrochloride is that betaine hydrochloride should not be taken by individuals with a current or past history of ulcers or those currently taking antacids or acid-blocking medications. Also, the pepsin that most betaine hydrochloride supplements include is usually animal-derived, so if you're a vegan or vegetarian, you might want to look for a betaine hydrochloride that uses, instead of pepsin, some acid-active protease enzymes and there are some betaine hydrochloride preparations out there that are tailored for vegans and vegetarians. So try looking for that. But overall, I hope I've shown you today that acid is an essential component of adequate digestion. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzymental. Stay healthy.